Some time ago, I started to develop a game entirely in C without using any engines and even OpenGL. The only thing I wanted to use is C and SDL. Since the game is developed in pure C, the resource management is a really difficult issue. C itself does not provide any convenient mechanisms for dealing with that. And as far as I know, in pure C world, everybody does that uh, with their own approaches. And so I also developed my own approach. And with this video, I want to share it with you. I don't think that approach is unique or anything. I'm pretty sure somebody implemented something similar. And furthermore, this approach was inspired by C++ Ari AI. So there's nothing new in that, but still I want to talk about it. By the way, I stream the process on my Twitch channel, so you can go and uh, follow me there. I usually stream the game development on weekends. It's quite fun. So I really recommend it. All right, let's start with defining a problem. We need to write a program that reads an array of numbers from a file and prints out the same numbers, but in the reversed order. It's a really simple program. Let's implement it in C. First, let's include all of the headers that we will need for the program. Then the entry point. First thing, we have to open a file we are going to read the array of numbers from. Next, we have to define a variable that will hold the size of the array. And then we just read the size of the array. Then we allocate enough memory for the array and read all of the numbers from the file to that array. Then we just print the elements of the array in the reversed order. Okay, let's try to compile this program, generate some data and see how the program works. What the f Don't, don't, don't say anything. So this simple program works, but we never close the file and we never deallocate array because for such a simple program, it doesn't really matter because once the program finishes, the operating system is going to close the file and deallocate all of the memory. So yeah, we just don't have to care about that. But imagine that this is not the entry of the program. What if this is just a function in a really big system and it's invoked from time to time to perform this operation. So now you cannot rely on operating system anymore. Now you have a really complex system over your function and this system does not necessarily provide any guarantees that would be provided by the operating system. So in that case, you actually have to manage the resources properly. Let's try to take this program and manage the resources properly. So after we have opened the file, we have to check that the the result is not null. And if it's null, we report an error and exit the program with failure. Next, in case of an error, fscanf usually returns end of file. If fscanf returns end of file, we report an error, close the file and exit with failure. Next, we have to check the result of memory allocation. If the result of malloc is null, we report an error close the file and exit with failure. Next, we have to check the result of fscanf on each iteration of the reading loop. If on any of the iteration of the reading loop fscanf returns end of file, we report an error, free the allocated memory, close the file and exit with failure. So we can also check the result of printf, but you get the idea. In C, when you usually call a function that may result in an error, you have to check its result and handle that somehow. The main problem with this approach is that the checking code grows linearly relative to the amount of resources. You see, in our program, we allocate just two resources. The first resource is the file and the second resource is the memory. And the more resources as we allocate, the more code we have to actually write in the handling body of the if condition. So if we allocate three resources, then we will have to allocate three resources in the if condition, which is kind of difficult to track. This is one of the problems with resource management in C. This problem of growing handling code is usually handled by using go to. And as far as I know, this is one of the rarest cases in C when using go to is justified. There, there are justified use cases of go to. Can you believe that? How it's usually done? Let's look at the resources that we allocate. First, we allocate the file and then we allocate the memory. At the end of the file, we have to deallocate resources in the reversed order. And inside of the each handling branch, we have to jump to the corresponding end of the function. Plus, usually it makes sense to create some kind of a code variable and return that code variable. 
available. Let's go through each of the handler and change its code accordingly. If I cannot open the file, we report an error, change the exit code to failure and jump to open input failure. Since we couldn't open the file, that means there is nothing to close, that's why we jump straight into the return. Next, if you cannot read the amount of elements in the array, we report an error, change the exit code to failure and jump to the read and failure label, which will close the file and return the exit code. If we cannot allocate enough memory, we report an error, change exit code to failure and jump to the access malloc failure label, which will close the file and return the exit code. Now, if on any of the iteration of the reading loop we cannot read a number, we report an error, change the exit code to failure and jump to the read access failure label which will free the memory, close the file and exit with the exit code. And once we reach the bottom of the function, we will automatically free the memory, close the file and exit with the exit code. And if we didn't encounter any errors along the way, the exit code is going to be success. So you see how this solves the problem of growing handling code. So no matter how how many resources we allocate, the amount of code in each handling condition is going to be three lines. Report an error, change the exit code and jump to the appropriate label. That approach is a little bit better, but still it's difficult to maintain. Because when you add more resources, the complexity of the deinitialization section of your function grows combinatorially. And it becomes even worse if you try to change the position of the resource allocation. Because now you will have to change the order of deallocation and keep track of all of the labels you you jump to and I tried to write my code like that and that was nightmare to change. So to solve that problem for my game I implemented something called lifetime. Lifetime is basically a stack. Each frame of that stack consists of two things. Pointer to the resource and the resource destructor. And basically each time you allocate a resource you push that frame on the stack. So for each resource you allocate, you push a single frame onto the lifetime stack. What that enables you with is destroying the entire stack with a single function, which simplifies handling errors in pure C. So let me show you how I use my lifetime implementation. Let's actually go back to our C approach without any go to's. Uh, include the header with the implementation. And the first thing you have to do, you have to create the lifetime object. Of course, the creation of lifetime can fail, so we have to check that. To allocate a resource, you have to use a push LT macro of lifetime implementation. You provide the lifetime object, the pointer to the resource, and the resource destructor. You do it like so. Push LT, the lifetime object, the resource itself, and the resource destructor. After that, you check that resource is allocated successfully. And if it is not, you report an error and use the return LT macro of lifetime implementation, providing the lifetime object and the value that you want to return. Let's see how this uh, return LT macro works. What it does, it destroys lifetime and returns the result that you provided. What's interesting is that when you destroy lifetime with the destroy LT function, what it does, it takes the stack and unwinds it. Basically, it pops out the frame of the stack, takes the destructor of the resource and deallocates the resource. Then it takes the next frame and deallocates the resource and so on until the stack is empty. So you deallocate all of the allocated resources before with just a single command. So let's use that for all of the error handlers in our code. This is how our code looks like. As you can see, this lifetime implementation solves two problems that we defined before. The first problem was the growing code of the handler. As you can see with the lifetime approach, the amount of code in each handler is exactly two lines. We report an error and return from the function. Since we are using our own return, it automatically deallocates all of the previously allocated resources. And the second problem was the complexity of the go to section. This go to section is just a nightmare to maintain, but with the lifetime approach, we just don't have it. This lifetime section is automatically managed by the stack. So this lifetime implementation is the part of the game that I develop on my Twitch channel. I'm going to provide the link to the source code in the description so you can look up the implementation yourself. It's a pretty simple implementation. It's just a stack with frames and yeah. 
what happens if you want to deallocate something that happens to be somewhere in the middle of the stack? That's a good question that I'm going to include to the video. The lifetime implementation actually consists of more than push LT and return LT. It also has operations like reset LT and release LT. Let's take a look at the reset LT. Reset LT takes the lifetime object, old resource and a new resource. And what it does, it finds the old resource in the stack, deallocates that old resource with the resource destructor that it finds and replace that particular frame with the new resource. I use this macro for reloading the level. For example, I have a game object that has its own lifetime object and it also encapsulates a level and a level is part of the game's lifetime. And sometimes by pressing R, I want to reload the level and I do that by resetting the level with the new one. This simple operation deallocates the old level, loads the new level from the file and puts it back to the same place to the lifetime on the stack. Another interesting operation is the release LT and this one does exactly what you ask. It takes the resource and releases it from the lifetime so it's not managed by the lifetime anymore. So I use it in a couple of places, for example, when I need to preserve the lifetime, but I want to deallocate only one particular resource in the lifetime. So basically I just release this resource and instantly deallocate it manually. So this is my approach to resource management in C. Let me know what you think of it. I don't even know what the official name of it. I'm pretty sure I'm not the first one who came up with this idea. But anyway, that's it for today. And thanks for watching.